Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. Couple of weeks ago we made a sphere like this. Now you might be wondering where we go from here. The answer is a lot of different places. So let's go there and check out our options. And subscribe because there are more videos coming every week. Here is our challenging design assignments. Decorating balls and other round shapes has been mankind's favorite pastime way before 3D pens were ever invented. And I'm talking centuries before. Two very diverse folk art traditions took it to incredible levels. And I highly recommend searching them for inspiration. One is Eastern European folk art of dyeing pisanke Easter eggs, which is done by wax resist dyeing technique and the variations are truly endless. The other one is Japanese art of making tamari balls, which are intricately embroidered balls that bring good luck and blessing to the recipient. To become a true Tamari master takes decades and the wealth of design is incredible. Despite the fact that the eggs and Tamari balls originated on the opposite sides of the world, both of these folk arts start by dividing the round shape into networks of segments as a way to organize the design elements around the shape. These networks are very traditional and ultimately lead to hundreds of designs starting from the same network. Now what we made here is just such a network and only the network. We don't even have a physical ball or an egg. We just have an empty space fenced in by our particular network, dividing the empty space into the inside of this ball and outside of this ball which I think it's kind of cool. However, it brings ton of new options that even these other disciplines don't have because you can either decorate just the surface like they do, or in our case, you can also fill the inside of the sphere with the design, or we can expand from the round shape, or any shape really, outward into the surrounding space. So this video will deal with just the surface decoration and leave the inside and the outside spaces for future episodes. I usually make my networks black so they disappear in the design easily. As the segments get from small to large, it helps with planning the size of your elements so they are the appropriate size for that particular place on the ball. Today I will make my network white, so it shows better on the video. If you don't remember how we got to this point, revisit the Spheres 1 episode, the link is in the description, to see how you make this ball. So here we have 16 division ball and we are almost ready to start to decorate. Before you start, make sure you remove any fine stray strands of plastic from your network so the invisible hair doesn't snag your future lines. I like to use a wood burning tool to burn mine off and um, use backlighting to be able to see them better. First stabilize the ball so it stays put and we are ready to go. Let's start with something simple like a stripe. Few little hints. The trick to making this work is to put just one element into each segment at a time and move on along your shape to the next one. By the time that spot comes around again, 
it will have cooled enough to take another element right next to the first one. If you start stressing the network in one spot by putting too many lines right next to each other, it will melt and collapse on you. Work on one hemisphere at a time and then flip it. It is not really possible to work upside down. As the network segments get smaller, there is no room to make all these stripes go all the way up to the top. So it's time to alter the design to fit our shape. Maybe we'll make a star up here. decorative spheres or any shapes really that are very light so they are easy to hang as a holiday party or wedding party decorations for example or stage design elements or any sculpture that needs to be suspended in the next episode of spheres we will deal with the space inside the ball so stay tuned